Video games and violence go together like game critics in the 8 out of 10 score. But that doesn't mean there can't be love in the air. I was playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla the other day. More on that in the future. And there was a particular side quest that made me want to write about love in video games. So here I am. Plus, I realized it was Valentine's Day. The Rekindling is a side quest in Valhalla about helping two lovers regain their spark in their relationship by recreating the violence of a Viking raid. You do this by breaking their stuff and burning their house down to reignite the fire in their hearts again. Sounds like my honeymoon. <laughs> it says a lot that even when the problem is a lack of love, for video games, the answer is obviously violence. <laughs> stop, stop, we're not doing that. This isn't that kind of show. This makes it pretty clear to me that the love language of video games is violence. Now this is why blasting through demon swarms in Doom Eternal is a heartwarming experience. I know at the end of the day, it's just a funny quest that's self-aware of its absurdity. But that is not the end of this video. Love is something that video games really seem to struggle with. More and more RPGs are providing players with romance options, and yet they are treated at best a fun diversion and at worst gratuitous objectification. I remember when Odyssey was boasting this massive change to the Assassin's Creed series, as if being able to have sex with someone is what makes a video game an RPG. They did all this so the player could agree to sleep with someone, then have the game cut to black, conclude that the deed was in fact done, and then the relationship is never important to the game again. If you ask me, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of true romance in video games. Now I'm not saying I want more sex scenes, quite the contrary. Cyberpunk 2077 spares no details when it comes to its sex scenes and I find it very annoying. The game subjects you to a drawn out, unnecessary sex scene that shows way more than it needs to. What I want is more of what comes before the sex. Love. Oh. Off the top of your head, name a strong video game couple. I'll wait. You said Mario and Peach, didn't you? Mario, Mario, and Princess Peach are one of the oldest and most iconic video game couples of all time. But is that really a relationship? She's always captured by Bowser, and they rarely spend time together unless they're playing tennis, racing, or fist fighting. And guess who else is there? Bowser. Even Odyssey. Super Mario Odyssey, not Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, Princess Peach is definitely not in the Assassin's Creed series, I assure you. Mario is though. Mario 100% is. Even Odyssey ends with Peach going peace out to both Mario and Bowser. Does she even want Mario? Is Mario a simp? What does this relationship with a girl is always at another dude's house actually look like? Come on Nintendo, let's explore this. Where's that HBO miniseries? That's the kind of Greek mythology Odyssey was taught. God damn it, wrong Odyssey again. Point is, there aren't a whole lot of power couples in games. I consider Nathan Drake and Elena Fisher from the Uncharted series to be a much better video game couple than Meech. That's Mario and Peach. Seriously. Meech. It's a thing. People say it. People say Meech. Nate and Elena love each other dearly. They go on adventures together, where they actually get to know each other and their relationship blossoms over time. Nate and Elena's relationship had more growth in four games than Mario and Peach have ever had in four console generations. Nate and Elena have real world problems in their relationship that they deal with together to help each other grow. They aren't absorbed with one another. They both have their own problems beyond their relationship. Elena is not some damsel in distress, but a strong female character. They're saying Pario now? Who says Pario? It's not just about the relationships on screen either, but the ways video games can convey these relationships. Two games immediately come to mind that both experiment with the medium nicely, Florence and Catherine. Florence is a phone game chronicling a man and woman's relationship from when it blooms to when it withers away. It's short and sweet and uses its gameplay to tell its story rather than cutscenes or dialogue. Love is just as much a challenge in Florence as are the hundreds of Viking raids in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Honestly, it's more challenging than those raids. Catherine is a lot more narrative heavy and gives the player choices to help navigate the main character through the love affair he's having between Catherine with a C and Catherine with a K. It questions the player on their own interpretations of the concept of love and through those choices dictates what kind of love you're looking for. It does provide challenging gameplay through its climbing puzzles, but the real meat of the game is the story and how it gets you thinking about the age-old question, what is love?
Florence and Catherine prove what video games can achieve with the topic of love. This art form has answered what happens when a heavy axe goes through someone's neck cavity too many times to count. It's time for love to take center stage more often. Or am I just being a massive simp? It's legally distinct, distinct, legally distinct.